Recent events have shown the lengths that politicians, both at the state and federal level, will go to to usurp your rights. So we'll ponder that next on the Constitution Study. There's one thing you have to know wherever you make your stay. Came from a long through line of everyday Americans. Hello there, everyday Americans. Paul Engel here with the Constitution Study, where we read and study the actual Constitution, where we teach uh, the rising generation to be free. I'm glad you could join me. As always, head over to the website, constitutionstudy.com. I still have my pre-launch sale going on. So if you go to constitutionstudy.com slash book, you can get my new book, The Constitution Study, at a significant discount. It's about 40% off, so that's a good deal. And there's some other deals that are available if you go and buy before I launch the book on May 4th. If you want to pre-order it on your Kindle, that's available up at Amazon.com. All of that you can be found at the website, constitutionstudy.com. I want to thank everybody that's either bought the book or, or any of the other programs, the people that are sharing this information, I want to thank all of you for people trying to get the word out. I also want to thank you for people that are asking me questions, especially during these rather difficult times, about what it means constitutionally, these different orders, which is part of the reason why I brought this particular topic to my Ponder This series. Now, if we're going to talk about the usurpation of rights, well, we really should start with the definition. Usurp, to seize and hold in possession by force, or without right. You see, we often use words, but we don't necessarily grasp their full meaning. So we're saying that someone has usurped your rights. <clears throat> they've, seed, they've seized them. They hold them, either by force or without the right to do so. As James Madison said in 1792, quote, in a word, as a man is said to have a right to his property, he may be equally said to have a property in his rights. James Madison said, you own your rights. They're your property. Shouldn't we bother defending them? Now, there's been a lot going on, and, and I hear a lot of people talking about what is and isn't constitutional. I love when people bring on experts in constitutional law because I immediately know they don't know what they're talking about. You see, constitutional law is not law. It's judicial opinion. So when you hear all these people saying, well, the Supreme Court has said, I know they don't know what they're talking about. When people talk about, well, you know, the courts have found they don't know what they're talking about. You see, we use this term unconstitutional. It gets used almost like a euphemism. Is this constitutional? Is this unconstitutional? The problem is we forgot. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Just read Article 6, Clause 2. So if it's the supreme law of the land, then anything that violates the Constitution is, by definition, illegal. So if the government is usurping your rights, and you have a property in your rights, the government is literally stealing your rights. They are stealing your blessings of liberty. Yeah, stealing, theft. I use those terms intentionally because that's the best way to describe what's been going on. And let's face it, where do politicians get the authority to decide when and if you should stay at home? Now, I'm not saying a government might not ask you, may request you, may give you information and say, listen, we want you to stay at home whenever possible to help stop the spread. That's a lot different from forcing you to stay at home, from threatening you if you don't. I mean, whatever happened to due process? If the government can force you to stay at home, you're basically under house arrest. Shouldn't you at least be charged with something before you are arrested and detained? And where do governments get the authority to determine what businesses are essential? I mean, what may be essential to them is maybe not essential to you, and what they think is not essential, you may find very essential. But nowhere do they do I see, in it, at least at the federal level, are they given that authority. Now, maybe that's different at the state level. Different states have different constitutions, and I don't know, I haven't studied them all, so I'm not qualified to say, you know, oh, every state has a situation. But you should ask, if you have a, a politician, a representative, an agent of the people that is doing this, 
ask them where they get the authority. And if they can't point to something in a constitution, then you've got a problem. I mean, they're also determining how large a group may peaceably assemble. Now, I've heard a lot of people complain this is a First Amendment violation, forgetting that the First Amendment starts out with Congress shall make no law. So unless we're talking about a federal law, we're not talking about a First Amendment. But each and every state of the union has a constitution with its own Bill of Rights, and I believe all of them have a right to peaceably assemble. But even to the point of government determining when and if you are allowed to work. See, we're missing a fundamental principle. The government didn't give you your rights. The government's there to protect your rights. You have a right to work. You have a right to live your life. You have a right to determine what is best for you and to live with the consequences. But no, governments have decided to usurp these rights, to take onto themselves the authority to tell you how you're going to live your life. Like pastors in Tampa Bay, Florida, and Baton Rouge, Louisiana, that have been charged for holding church services. In fact, the pastor in Tampa Bay was actually arrested because he opened his church for service. You're telling me that the state governments, or in this case, the governors, because I believe these are both done based on executive orders, have the authority to tell a church you can no longer assemble? That you cannot worship in a group? Now, if you go to church, is there an increased possibility you might get sick? Yeah. It's called being alive. And taking responsibility, making responsible choices. If you don't want to take that risk, don't go to church. If you think the risk is small enough and you're willing to take that risk, why should the government tell you you can't? Legally, I don't think they can because the Constitution is the supreme law of the land, and if they're telling you that you can't assemble, they're violating the state constitution. And then, of course, we have Los Angeles. Now, not only did the mayor issue a safer-at-home order, but he is encouraging people to snitch on their neighbors. That's right. Not only is the mayor telling you, you stay at home or you're going to get in trouble, we're going to use force to take away your right to to live the life the way you want, to be at liberty. But he's encouraging your neighbors to snitch on you, to turn you in if you don't bow down to his order. He's even gone so far as to suggest that those who would turn in violators will be rewarded. I'm sorry, that doesn't sound like America. That sounds more like Stalinist Russia or Nazi Germany. We're talking about turning cities into despotic tyrannies. And in fact, we're seeing this grow across the nation. These are all usurpation of your rights. They're taken by force. They're taken without right. But we're all told that these infringements are necessary to keep us safe. Well, as William Pitt the Younger said, quote, Necessity is the plea for every infringement of human freedom. It is the argument of tyrants. It is the creed of slaves. We must decide if we are a free people or if we're slaves. Then we must decide what we're going to do when the governments we put in place to protect our rights instead try to enslave us. We should all remember what the Declaration of Independence says, quote, when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evidence a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. America, when will enough be enough? When will these long train of abuses and usurpations push us to act? When will we exercise our right, our duty, not only to ourselves, but to our children and our children's children to throw off such government and provide new guards for our security? Now be glad, be very glad, we don't need a revolution to do this. We only need a ballot box. But until we start changing who we put in government to act as our agents in our name, we will continue to suffer these usurpations of our rights. We will continue to be treated as slaves, all under the siren call of necessity. 
So what do you think, America? Are you ready to throw off a tyrannical government, whether that be at the state, federal, or even local level? Are you ready to hold your elected officials accountable to the oaths they take to the constitutions and the laws of this land? We need to stop waiting for someone else to fix this problem and realize the problem is us. We elect these people. The people of Los Angeles elected a mayor that is turning their city into Stalinist Russia. The people of Florida and Louisiana have hired governors that are willing to arrest pastors simply for opening their church for voluntary services. Voluntary. There are other abuses. I just touched the surface. And we're all being told it's because it's necessary. Well, it's not. Government may be able to suggest things that we do, but they do not have the authority to force us unless we are their slaves. Unless we serve government rather than government serve us. I'm old enough to remember when we used to call those in government public servants. Well, now we should really call them public masters because that's the way we're acting, because that's the way we let them. And yes, it's frustrating, and I'd love to have a quick fix. I'd love to be able to wave a magic wand or pass some legislation and fix all of this. The problem is, no matter what you do, you, ha you have to deal with the root cause of the problem, and that is an American electorate more interested in what the Kardashians are doing than what's going on in their state houses. And American people that know more about the latest series on Netflix than they do about the supreme law of the land. And that's going to take time. That's going to take effort. But that's why I started the Constitution study. That's why I wrote the book. That's why I do these videos. It's why I spend so much time and effort getting this message out, to start educating the people that first, we need to change. We need to educate ourselves, because the government sure isn't. And then how do we actually peacefully and legally regain control of our out-of-control governments. So if you agree with me, head over to the website, constitutionalstudy.com, check out the book, check out the other programs that are going on there. I have my Constitutional Scholar program is up there as well. Check it all out. And if I got your attention, if you found this valuable, please comment, let me know. It's always good to get encouragement. It's always good to get people to ask me questions. I had someone ask me a question from a podcast I did almost two years ago. I love it. But if you really think this is worth it, I hope I'll see you next time on The Constitution Study. There's one thing you have to know wherever you make your stand. Came from a long line of everyday